Everything is clearly cloudy at the quarterback position. That's what Kirk Ferentz had to say today at his weekly press conference. What's happening at QB for the Hawkeyes and a rapid reaction. Iowa goes to 5-0 and in hoops today. Locked on Hawkeyes. You are locked on Hawkeyes. Your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome in. I'm Trent Condon, and this is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We're available wherever you find podcasts. You can also watch us on YouTube. While you're there, hit that subscribe button. Just takes a moment and helps us get in front of more Hawkeye fans. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. You can start the season off with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Just visit FanDuel.com to get started. We got basketball to get into Iowa with an impressive win against Ryder. Might be saying, Trent, impressive. Come on, it's Ryder. And you would be right on that front. But I think there's some elements of this team that gives me hope this maybe could be different for Iowa basketball in 2024-25. We will talk about that. But we open up things today with some football conversation and a football conversation that is centered around today's uh, yesterday's press conference with Kirk Ferentz on Tuesday afternoon. So uh, Kirk gets up there after hearing from some of the players. Um, wait a question. What's going to happen with your All-American linebacker, Jay Higgins? Wasn't asked. Uh, some of the players were asked, including Nick Jackson. What's Jay Higgins' status? You have to ask coach. Nobody has coach. So we don't know on that front. However, there was a lot at the quarterback position. And that's where we begin today's conversation. So after the press release came out, the uh, weekly game notes came out, the depth chart that was there, we saw Cade McNamara elevated back up to the top spot. After earlier in the week on Monday, the news from CBS and 24-7 Sports that Cade McNamara was back. And with it, we were not going to have Brendan Sullivan out there. So it felt pretty cut and dry, right? It was going to be Cade McNamara back out there. Jackson Stratton would be the backup, and they would go that direction. Well, then we throw into the mix. Marco Lyonez is back practicing earlier than anticipated, likely because of all these injuries, but he's not going to be ready to play, or is he going to be ready to play? So Kirk said this a couple of different times. It's clearly cloudy, and he was talking about cloudy a lot. He was talking about cloudy about just the picture, I think, of the injury front at the quarterback spot. And maybe he was also talking a little bit about Cade McNamara. Cade McNamara has been cleared to play, but it doesn't sound like things went real well. Reading between the lines, and that's what you have to do with Kirk Ferentz. Listening to these now for the past quarter century, you get to know Kirkisms, right? And you have to read between the lines, and you have to dig a little bit deeper into what he's saying, but what he's what he's trying to say without right seeing it. And I think that is a pretty easy and a pretty logical step to take. The kid back to Mara does not look good since he's come back off the concussion. And you can make your jokes about Cade McNamara, the quarterback. And we talked about yesterday, the numbers and every day is you remember how dreadful those were of him as a quarterback this year. And even worse than I anticipated that they were. They're awful. No two ways about it. So instead it's Jackson Stratton time. A Jackson Stratton that made a couple good plays against UCLA. I think acquitted himself better than probably anybody would have anticipated. This was a guy that started August camp fifth at the quarterback spot. Number five, McNamara, Sullivan, Marco Lyonez, James Rezar, who got moved to wide receiver and then tore his ACL. And then it was Jackson Stratton. I mean, how many reps did he get? Not many. And how many reps did he get even leading into the UCLA game? Not a whole lot. Going back to last week, It does sound like Tim Lester, he likes the throwing ability. You know, and this is something that I I do find interesting. People looking at this Lester offense and seeing that, oh, well, it's just built on the running attack. Yeah, the running attack's a part of it, and that's where things start. But there's a lot more that he wants to develop in this passing game, and he hasn't been able to. He hasn't had the signal caller that he wants. Now, this is not to say that Jackson Stratton is the guy, but he's the kind of guy. 
He moved around. He made a play with his legs. Rush was coming. He stepped up in the pocket. Nobody was there. He ran for, what, 10 yards. He's not a runner. He's not certainly Brendan Sullivan, and I don't even know what kind of wiggle he actually has. There's also a guy that was 4 or 17 throwing the football at Colorado State in his brief career there. Doesn't inspire a whole lot of confidence. If that's what you're doing in the Mountain West, that you're suddenly going to be able to come into the Big Ten and you're going to become, even at minimum, an average quarterback. But if it started now, Kirk came out and said, Jackson Stratton would be our starter. He said they eventually won't know until Friday. And then when they know him, they make the decision who's going to get the start. They're not going to let us know. God forbid. Mike Loxley going to suddenly change up his game plan, what they're going to do defensively? I don't think so, but that aside. So here we are, Jackson Stratton. I know some people are just so out on Cade McNamara that they're excited about it. I, I can't get there. I just can't get there. And it's not any great love of Cade McNamara. It is disbelief for me that Jackson Stratton can be even an average quarterback from what we've seen in his limited time. Maybe that's not fair. Maybe I could be dead wrong here. But I have a feeling if it's Jackson Stratton for four quarters of football on Saturday, it is not going to be a fun road trip out to College Park, Maryland. That this thing's going to get ugly. Got some numbers coming up with that a little bit later on here. But we continue. Uh, fired up Kirk. We saw he seemed a little aggravated. And the question came up about going up against Brian. And he didn't specifically talk about Brian. Um, didn't say anything about it. Said he was happy that he's in good hands with Mike Loxley out there, a guy that he does have a lot of respect for. So he had that component to it, uh, which I found a little bit odd. And I don't have any reporting on this. This is not reporting, but heard from some people that that relationship, him and Brian, probably not the best right now. I, I don't know what Brian anticipated his dad was going to do when he was fired. But regardless, that doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. It will be odd. A guy that you coach with for the last, what, seven, eight years? Your son. A guy that you wanted to succeed you. I, there's no way that you can look at it in any other direction. Look, he handed the reins of an offensive coordinator job to a guy that didn't have a resume to be a Big Ten offensive coordinator. And there were some highs, mostly lows. And it cratered, obviously, over the last couple of years. But I don't know. Again, reading between the lines just struck me as a little bit odd. There wasn't maybe more to the question. Um, he said, quote, I haven't given a lot of thought, quite frankly. Obviously, I knew it was coming, but the bottom line is this. To your point, it's the best I can come with, up with. It's weird coming back here, whether it'll be Barry Alvarez the first year, Bill Snyder year two, Dan McCartney, Bob Stoops, four guys that I work with and Bob played for us on top of it. Tremendous respect for all those guys. It's a weird dynamic, but the bottom line is this. The reality is when you get to game day, that's what's really silly about coaches, exchanges, greetings, and all that. I fully know what the other coach wants to do, just like he knows what I want to do and how we hope the day goes. It's probably not a great time for a family reunion or just even seeing old friends. Everybody is cordial, but the bottom line, we've all got business to take care of on Saturday. We'll see where it goes. But I think his experience has been good. Again, I think his experience has been good. What I know about it, and as a parent, I'm glad he's with good people. And Mike is a guy I've got a lot of respect for. Weird. Just a weird quote. It's speculation. It's conjecture. That's all it is. Just something to chew on. We continue here, Locked On Hawkeyes. Let's get into some good feelings. And that is this Iowa basketball team. Off to a 5-0 start. Great start to the season against mostly terrible opponents outside of Washington State. However, there is something different with this team. Can it lead to March success? We'll talk about that as we roll through. This is Locked On Hawkeyes. Today's episode of the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast is brought to you by Mint Mobile. Look, I love a great deal as much as the next guy, but I'm not going to crawl through a bed of hot coals just to save a few bucks. It has to be easy. No hoops, no BS. So when Mint Mobile said it was easy to get wireless for $15 a month with the purchase of a three-month plan, I called him on it. Turns out 
it's really that easy to get wireless for $15 a month. The longest part of the process was how much time I had to spend on hold waiting to break up with my old provider. Hop on the website. Very simple, easy purchase. Love everything about it. To get started, just go to mintmobile.com slash college. There you'll see that right now all three-month plans are only $15 a month, including the unlimited plan. All plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with you, along with all of your existing contacts. Find out how easy it is to switch to Mint Mobile and get three months of premium wireless service for just 15 bucks a month. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash college. That's mintmobile.com slash college. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash college. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Speed slower above 40 gigs on unlimited plans. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Today's episode is also brought to you by Skylight Frames. Look, I love this. I struggle finding the perfect gift around holiday season. It's just not something that I'm good at. I I struggle. My wife's great at it. I am terrible. And I just time in and time out. I dread the thought of screwing it up for another year. Are you buying for somebody who has everything or just seems like that? Maybe they're just a little unpleasant. Could be your mother-in-law. Are you tired of wasting money on useless clutter that no one really needs? All these things certainly speak to me. It's easy to use with skylight frames. Setup takes just 60 seconds to get going, and the touchscreen is a game changer. You can swipe through photos, tap to see new photos sent, tap the heart button to say thank you, to the sender, and it's better than social media. It's a great private way, how about that, private, to share photos without posting it to the world and having to print and store hard copies. And satisfaction guaranteed. We're confident that you're going to love Skylight. We offer free 120-day returns. And right now, as a special limited-time offer to our customers, get $20 off your purchase of a Skylight frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash college that's skylightframe.com slash college s-k-y-l-i-g-h-t-f-r-a-m-e.com slash college get twenty dollars off your purchase now at skylightframe.com slash college Trent kind of back with you once again on the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast. Let's get into some hoops. And thanks for joining us as always here. Every day or shout out to you, everybody making all those great comments on the YouTube side and the ones making not so great comments. We love you over there also and our old school audio side as well. Five star reviews. All of those help us get in front of more Hawkeye fans. Let's jump into it. Uh, Iowa with the win against Ryder. Okay, Ryder, we talked about them a bit yesterday. It wasn't a deep preview by any means. It's another bye game. It's another game where I was a big favorite. They were favored by 20. Uh, they cover. How about that? Uh, Iowa gets it done 83-58. But what we've seen now out of this team on the defensive end and this press, Iowa likes to play fast. When you think of Iowa basketball in the Fray McCaffrey area, and you're number 15, what do you think of first? Outside of disappointment, I know for a lot of you. After that, what do you think of? On the hardwood, what do you think of? You think of offensive skill. And they certainly have that. Peyton Sanford is a skilled basketball player. Owen Freeman, he can get buckets. They got dudes that are going to be able to score. Josh Dix, when he gets back healthy, he's going to be able to do those things. However, what gives me at least hope that this thing is going to be a little bit different this season is what they're doing on the defensive end of the floor. Now, again, we don't want to overreact to a game against Ryder. Ryder goes 1-16 of from three. They had some open threes that they just didn't knock down. Jess Settles talked a little bit about that uh, during the broadcast, held them to 42, but they forced 20 turnovers. And there was almost a couple more. Fran mentioned that in the postgame. Now they're at 21 on the shot clock, nearly 10-second violations a couple of different times there. But this is continuing. Going back to the win against Washington State on Friday, they won that game 
on the defensive end of the floor. Yeah, Drew Thelwell knocking down a couple of three-pointers. That was big in order for that to happen. No doubt, those are important components. And this team offensively is not quite at the level that they've been, certainly recently. They're still 30th in the country in offensive efficiency, down from the top 15 range that they are seemingly every single year. However, on the defensive end of the floor, I was currently 66 in the country. That's a pretty big jump up. And it's a big jump up really for two guys. The additions of Drew Thelwell and Sadio Triori on the transfer portal has added an athletic dyna dynamic to this team that they just haven't had. You have plus defenders that are good athletes, and it's making a big change in this team. If this holds up, and again, they haven't played anybody of real consequence to this point in the year, and you don't want to overreact. However, these are also adjusted for the opponents that you're facing. This would be Iowa's best defense since 2016 when Adam Woodbury was on the floor. But a couple other numbers that I think jumped out on the defensive end to me and why this team is different. Okay, they're holding teams to lower percentages. That's easy to see. You can see that they're chasing teams off the three-point line at the best rate that they have done all season long. Again, opponents a part of that. However, they are turning teams over at the highest rate right now in the Fran McCaffrey era. Never before have they been at this. 23% of possessions are ending in turnovers from the opponent. Small sample size. One game can throw that off. I get that. And this is one of them. 20 turnovers here. This just gives you a little bit of hope. Look, if I was still locked in, I think they're going to be an NCAA tournament team. I said that. I was disappointed the first couple of games of the year. Didn't see the intensity. Remember, they were doing that, though, those first two games, minus Sadie Traore. And now you look at what he is. The athleticism, had a run out dunk, had a nice reverse layup. He was able to get to the free throw line, and his speed was a part of that. We'll see how well he can rebound against bigs, real bigs at the power forward position, but you have that component to it. Drew Thelwell, his ability to get downhill, seven assists in that game. He wasn't forcing, he wasn't chucking, he wasn't trying to do too much offensively for this squad. Price Sanford has been a bright spot. I said it at one point this summer when we were talking some Iowa basketball. One day during the long summer months when we we're waiting for Iowa athletics to come back. And I just wondered where he fit in, what kind of role he was able to carve out. He's got a skill set that is much more diversified than his older brother, Peyton. He's got a guy that can get to the rim better, has more athleticism. And you're seeing that show up, coupled with a three point shot. A, Looks a little bit better coming out of his stand. But that aside, he's not just a three-point shooter. And that's Peyton. Yeah, Peyton. When guys are coming out, hedging hard on him, trying to cover him up, yeah, he, he can go to the rim. But that's not his strength. There's more to the game of Price. And he missed some shots early in this basketball game. He was able to knock him down during the second half. A Cooper Koch's three, that thing's a thing of beauty. And I maintain he is going to win Iowa a couple of games this year. That. Again, against a bad opponent was a good start. And that's what we need out of this squad. We, we need to see these kind of things. Iowa off to a 5-0 start. They've beaten one team ranked in the top 100. That's Washington State at 89 in the Ken Pomeroy rankings. It's going to ramp up, though, on Friday night. When they go to Kansas City against Utah State, this is going to be a step up. But I think we have some hope. We have hope that this team is going to look better, maybe, than some past teams. Uh, good to see Peyton Sanford get going a little bit. Mentioned his three-point shot. Just two of seven again from downtown, uh, but he was able to get inside a whole lot more. Had a dunk. Should have had another. Jess Settles was giving him a hard time. Uh, not flushing one down on a breakout uh, that he had in the basketball game. Mentioned Price, how uh, he played. Owen Freeman, just a man, man amongst boys. Uh, stay out of foul trouble, and you're going to be in good shape there. A um, couple block shots out of him. Laje Dembali is who he is. Brock Harding. Look, let's not turn this into, I believe Drew Thelwell is the best point guard on the roster right now. And I know I'm not alone. But that doesn't mean that we have to eat our own. It doesn't mean that we have to kill Brock Harding at every instance. Brock Harding's playing fine. Brock, Brock Harding's probably playing a little bit better even than I thought he would this portion of the season. I just like Thelwell more. I think Thelwell's better for what they are and what they need to be this season. That doesn't mean that Brock Harding's bad. For the Quad City people, or the Harding family, or whoever it is, it's not knocking them. It's just giving a true 
analysis of what we're seeing from this squad. Two things can be right. Brock Harding's playing well. Drew Thelwell, though, is what they need. And maybe what they need to go and win a game in the tournament. Maybe pull off an upset in the round of 32. Or, God forbid, because it never happens to Iowa, there's an upset in the round before, and they actually get to play a lower seed in the second round. How great would that be to see a chance to punch your ticket into the Sweet 16? Long way to go. It gets more difficult. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Plus, a big neutral court game also coming up for the women's basketball team. Speaking of neutral court, we talked about the crowd in Moline. Think more and more about it. What's it going to take? And tenants, it was a disaster again tonight. How do we fix Carver for men's basketball? Because it does need fix for women's basketball. It certainly doesn't need to be fixed for wrestling. What do we do? We'll talk Carver. We'll talk about the matchup against Utah State. We'll talk a whole lot of everything, plus Iowa women's basketball against Kansas. As we roll through, this is Locked On Hawkeyes. Today's episode of the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Well, it is ready to tackle the NFL action with you. And America's number one sportsbook, FanDuel. Right now, new customers, how about this? You can bet $5. You're going to get 150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more right there on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. Not just the NFL, they got you covered. College basketball, NBA. How about college football this weekend? Iowa going out to Maryland. Iowa currently at FanDuel, a six-and-a-half point favorite against the Terrapins. I thought maybe the Jackson Stratton news would change that line a little bit. Really hasn't budged a whole lot. How about this, though? This might have been the most surprising number that I found on the FanDuel Sportsbook app in a long time. I was team total, total points scored, 26 and a half. Maybe something to keep an eye on. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet with FanDuel. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Trent Condon back with you one final time here on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. All right, we got a lot of things to uh, just kind of potpourri of everything. Iowa against Kansas, women's basketball in Sioux Falls coming up on Wednesday evening. Should be a fun matchup there and maybe a team that can push the Hawkeyes a little bit more. They were pushed for the first quarter and the first half, I guess. Second quarter, Iowa pulled away against Drake over the weekend. Nice getting a road victory in that one. but. It's going to change now. Six o'clock, BTN will have that one. Kansas comes in 4-0 themselves on the season. Uh, they have run past their opponents to this point. Uh, North Alabama, Nebraska, Omaha, Sam Houston State. All right, some easy wins. And Lindenwood was the uh, other matchup that they had. So you got that component to it. However, I wish should win this game. But we'll check out the FanDuel Sportsbook app and see what that is. Six o'clock kickoff, by the way, tip off for that one uh, on BTN. And you can catch the Iowa women trying to get to Sydney Falter completely back in 100%, making her way back off the surgery in the offseason. Uh, we've talked about Addison O'Grady and her emergence this year, which has been so fun to watch. And starting to get those freshmen clicking a little bit more. Just two minutes in the last game for Ava Hyde. Do we see more of her out there on the hardwood? Uh, Mulaney has been fun to watch. Dremlo, she's going to have moments this season. Good freshman class. And this is a squad that's just easy to root for. It's going to be a great environment. It will be. And it's great for those people up in Sioux Falls, and they'll get it on the men's side coming up against Utah in December to have these matchups. Moline, uh, last Friday, it'll be Kansas City this week with uh, the matchup against Utah State. And I come to this. Cover Hawkeye Arena. It's a weird arena, right? I remember walking in for the first time back oh, sometime in the 80s and um, being just awestruck by it, being just completely amazed that this place that had been watching basketball games for years and years and years, here it was in front of me, sunken in hole, right? There's not two levels to it. It's one, just one big bowl, not a bad seat in the house, but it's hit a tipping point now. As you see the paid attendance, less than half the building filled 
for the matchup against Ryder. You had that. And yet, actual tickets scanned, three, 4,000 actually in the building. So what can be done? Is it environment? Is it Fran McCaffrey needs to reach out to people? Is it just winning? I, I don't think that's it alone because this program has been at least mildly successful compared to many of their brethren. So what else can be done? I, if you have great ideas, shoot them to me because I'm at a loss. I, I think so many people are just completely out on Fran McCaffrey. I don't think it's fair. I think that people's expectation level for Iowa basketball is out of loop. And it's a chicken and egg theory, right? Which came first? Well, the lack of, we hear about lack of NIL funds and the inability for Iowa to compete in the highest markets. Nobody shows up. Nobody wants to invest in the program. It's, it's a hard knock to crack I'm trying to figure out what it is. The building is not great. It needs to be renovated. It's old, showing its signs. It's younger than I am, but it's still old. Opened up in the early 80s. You go down there, you get good seats, you're sitting in the first five, ten rows. Then you gotta go up, kick a leak, takes forever. Then you wanna go up, grab a coke, grab a beer, grab a hot dog, takes forever. Get up there, huffing and puffing. Even if you're in decent shape, it takes a little bit to get up those steps. And certainly as you get older, it's just it's not a fan friendly experience. And you saw that crowd. How big of a difference did the crowd make against Washington State? And you just don't have that. Yeah, when we get to the big, it'll be banged out for the Iowa State game. When there's big opponents that are coming into the Big Ten, it'll be close to full. There'll be 12, 13,000 in there. But it's not just that. It's even when it's full, it doesn't have the same vibes. It doesn't have the vibes that it does for a wrestling meet. It doesn't have the same vibes it has now for women's basketball. It's a conundrum, and it's very frustrating to somebody like myself, and I'm sure everybody out there listening that loves Iowa basketball. With that, we will be back with you after Iowa, Kansas. We'll have a recap of that one. We'll see if we find out more information of this quarterback situation. Jackson Stratton, if it started today, he'd be your starter. Maybe the good news is the game is until Saturday. We will see on that one. Can Iowa actually tackle on the road? What's happening to this defense on the road? Ooh, so many questions with this one. Busy week coming up. We got a lot more coming your way. Your team every day. That's what we do here on the Lockdown Network. And not just Lockdown Hawkeyes. Whatever your favorite team is. Maybe you're a Bears fan like me in the NFL. Vikings, Chiefs, Packers, whatever it is, we got you covered there. Your favorite NBA team. And not just team specific. And we got you all covered there in the professional sports. We also have things like Lockdown Big Ten. Craig Sheeman doing a great job talking all things Big Ten football and basketball wise locked on women's college basketball locked on for each general sport college football college basketball all kinds of things all here every day on the lockdown network and thanks for being with us here on locked on hawkeyes thanks for making us your first listen every day we'll talk to you again tomorrow until then go hawks